National Teacher Policy is that framework that is providing guidelines for teachers to follow going forward. It was launched in 2019 by the Ministry of Education. Priority area number one is the establishment of the National Teacher Council, mandated with registration of the teachers, accreditation of the teachers, and also licensing of the teachers. Another standard is the integration of ICT in the teaching and learning process. Uh, whereby we are encouraging all institutions of learning to use blended learning to ensure that learners are taught in their comfort zone and during their time of convenience. We were excited to have been approached to be part of the blended uh, learning uh, and uh, promoting gender equality in education. We were able to mobilize uh, people the women, the community members and leaders talking about the importance of promoting girl child education and also the importance of supporting women who would want to advance in uh, education. And so this project gave us an opportunity to develop communication materials that were used in awareness creation in the community. In Kavari University, we are very happy to be part of this program. We are helping the enhancement of the national teachers' uh, policy, the new policy which requires each teacher from the primary school level to secondary school level to have a degree qualification, first degree qualification. So we have provided a curriculum to enable these teachers to upgrade from certificate to diploma and from diploma to a degree and those who already have diplomas to upgrade accordingly. But we have provided the personnel, the teachers to do that too. We have provided the facilities and we package their teaching in such a way that they go back as they do their other work, they are able to continue learning. The outcomes are both tangible and intangible, but we helped women by easing the, the process. So this package would help them to access information without, without necessarily being on internet for those who are in remote areas. The perception of society hasn't really changed. The expectation is a man can have higher education, but maybe a woman can wait a bit so long as the husband has the degree. He might help as, as head of the family. That notion hasn't gone off of both, both husband and wife working together to improve family income, to improve family well-being. For us, this project, it's really about promoting gender equality for education and really to, to show that women have the right to higher education and they are able to access it through this decentralized platform that allows you to, to study with, without actually going to the university. So you are able to learn and also advance in your career and meet the requirements uh, set by the government of Uganda without actually sacrificing your job, your family, and everything that you have to, to take care of as a woman. So for this project, we really promote and advocate for gender equality in education for women because we realize that there's still so much disparity in that sense. During our 11-month project in Uganda, a comprehensive sensitization effort was conducted to focus on women's socio-economic participation. At the same time, our strategy was to build the capacity of Kabale University to produce digital content for distance education and to design a technology to bring the teachers to the students. CIMC came up with an innovative solution for e-content delivery without dependency on the internet or electricity. In our blended e-learning model, in-service teachers accessed the offline education lecture videos, ELVs, on computers at local study centers. For those 
who were unable to attend the study centers, particularly women, mobile video players preloaded with educational content were provided along with solar chargers. This allowed the students to study independently, at home or in the workplace. To meet the ICT hardware requirements for the project, CIMC procured the studio equipment for ELV production, 30 desktop computers for the study centers, and 250 mobile video players for distribution to the students. CIMC also played a pivotal role in training 22 professors from the Kabbalah University's Faculty of Education. Four women and 18 men were trained on video recording techniques using equipment donated by the Government of Canada. Additionally, eight ICT members, three women and five men were trained to maintain and operate the recording equipment. Six women were also trained as study center coordinators to help students utilize the computers at the study centers and to manage the distribution of the handheld devices. Seed did a lot for promotion. We used media, mainstream media and social media. We did in partnership with Ackford. We put out pamphlets and flyers that we spread around the communities. We did radio talk shows and this is before and during the implementation because initially the announcements were for the project that was just about to start and then after that for more registrations and mostly for gender-based violence messages and gender equality. Initially the technology seemed to overwhelm some of them so they went through the trainings but they seemed a bit uncertain so as we went along because we were doing uh, monthly meetings, monthly forums in which they discuss challenges and what has changed since they started. So after a while they started to get comfortable with the uh, MP4 players and they started to adjust and you know as they said as they went along things have gotten easier. Uh, the best example is the male engagement activities where we train male community leaders so that they can go out there in their communities and advocate for gender equality and against gender-based violence and for women in education. Um, also monthly forums for all the students who are registered under the FIT program for them to discuss their challenges, their progress and then report to their seniors as a group as opposed to the one-on-ones that usually take a while. And then finally, we have the monthly women forums, which are just for the women, so they can discuss in depth their challenges, what they are facing, and then exchange ideas on how to make things better. The socio-economic impact of this project is that, one, we are now seeing behavioral change. We are seeing attitudinal change towards women and girl children and especially women who want to, to advance in education. But also, we have been able to see women who would have thought that it is already maybe late for them to advance in education, come out, appreciate the fact that they can still study and, uh, and be able to advance. But also this project has helped both men and women to appreciate the fact that with technology, you can advance, you can have education brought closer to you in your home, in your office. And thirdly, we have been able to see that actually there is reduced violence because the women have been able to study at the same time fulfilling both their social and economic obligations. This innovation is unique, it is cost effective, but also it breaks the barriers. Barriers that have been, have been existing between men and women in uh, advancing education or accessing education. Since this was a pilot, my appeal would actually be for the government to take it on and it is rolled to other higher learning institutions so that we are able to reach as more women as possible. I also think that it will also create more opportunities for women to become leaders. And you know, when women become leaders, they influence 
the decisions that happen in the different spaces that they would be occupying. And the other is that, of course, we shall be having role models that will share their experiences with young girls. More girls would be encouraged to go to school, keep in school, uh, break the bias against technology, because these have been able to make it because they broke that, that biasness. So generally, this is a very good innovation that is actually, if carried out in different uh, regions, would create opportunities for women, would bridge the gap that is between men and women, and having, of course, more women advance. And that is what we want to see. And that, of course, promotes gender equality. A professor, a lecturer uh, appears before a camera or any kind of recording, and you conduct a class. Yeah, like you do a normal class in, cl in, in, a, in a building, in a lecture room. Then we can have these lectures recorded and then shared to the students. We established study centers, uh, one in Kisoro, another one in Rupungiri and Kasese, and then of course the one in Kabare at the main campus. These study centers have computers. So what we used to do is that these ROVs were transported, transferred from the main campus and distributed to the computers at the stations and the students of those catchment areas could come to those centers either uh, get them loaded onto their laptops or onto their phones or they could read from those computers stationed there then even after semester after doing exams their gadgets were returned we offload the, the previous work and then load the, the new semester and we give, we give them back to them so there was that movement from the center our university to the centers and then back. As of now, our professors are aware, um, they believe and they are well convinced to this innovation. Actually, they even suggested that we should roll it out to other programs. And I think that's the next move. When I look at the performance of the FIT project students, it's amazing. We had an issue of power, which is general, which is cross-cutting <coughs> across the region. And as such, in the event power goes off, the entire recording had to be repeated. So power posed a big challenge for us. So as a university, I would do consider that we engage in more partnership. We need more recording studios. As many lecturers come on the board, one studio certainly cannot be enough. Preparing for the field project videos, I got some of the challenges and some of the challenges were being in a new environment uh, where you're just alone in the studio and you don't have the, the students. And some of the uh, lectures were practical, so it was not easy for some of us for the first time. It was so successful because most of us got uh, skills, and the skills were for uh, lo uh, recording, loading the videos, uploading the videos, and also we got the skills so that we'd be able to train the students. Comes that is nine. After, where do you go? You spend more money when traveling, but when you are using this this method, really it is so helpful to us. It reduces the expenses. And the, another thing, it is you are sitting with the lecturer all the the time you like. For example, if I want to re, to revise. For short time, I have got from the, uh, here in, at school, and I begin revising. And after some minutes, I come back. It saves the time in, the, in this way, where you can get the lecturer all the time. One of the challenges 
is to get the one to consult. When one is watching the videos, somewhere, somehow, you may not understand what the lecture is explaining, but you can't get the one to ask. Secondly, the challenge of tuition. Because at first we thought we are going to be given tuition, we are going to be given everything. But uh, later on, we received the videos and we never had the tuition. And so what we expected didn't happen. So I think that one is the second challenge. I think I'm facing. At first, we thought of uh, sponsorship. Then we waited for the sponsorship. The sponsorship didn't come. But the fact that she had started, we had to struggle. But the, the, the gadget and whatever she's using, it is of great importance because even when she's cooking, she can still learn. When she's breastfeeding, she can still learn. Even when she's in the garden, she can still learn. It is of great value that the gadget helped her even when she's, she's not in class, she can still study. However, there are some problems in case you don't understand the lecture or what. It wasn't easy for her to get her to consult because sometimes someone would be teaching and would not get what he or she is teaching. And there you, can, you cannot consult because it is not face-to-face -face learning. Uh, my husband was very happy because I heard it on the radio as it was not taking long. And since we are studying without doing at school, we are able to cater for the family needs, taking care of children, and at the same time, looking after the gardens. So he was very happy. It is uh, time-saving. You can study from anywhere, even at school. After teaching, you get your gadget and you start revising. It is a bit cheaper because you, you don't take long to be there. But with tradition, you have to stay at school mm. until, you comp until you complete the semester. So this one is, is better, very interesting. Me as a man, to have a woman who is educated actually to a partial level, really it impresses me and uh, I appreciate it in my life and I feel being big because of having uh, a lady who is having a, a bachelor's. You see the, 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 the duty of women. I know women have got a very big love because a woman loves children and, um, and husband. But most of the husbands they love the children, they neglect women. But a woman takes care of all. And that's why I appreciate this uplifting women's education. Because if they are educated highly, really the nation will be okay. So I wish women may keep on upgrading. The blended learning solutions is a very, very good one. We appreciate as the Minister of Education uh, because we are looking at the 21st century skills at digital skills which are required or digital literacy which is required in the 21st century so this innovation is very timely and very appropriate and relevant to the ministry of education to the teaching profession uh, because we believe that with this teachers are going to have education from their areas of convenience and the time and at a time of convenience uh, it is going to reduce issues of domestic violence where some of the cultures in Uganda do not support ladies to, to pursue higher education. So with this innovation that allows teachers to cover a syllabus or to cover a course within their comfort, it's really very, very good. It is going to encourage them to research and eventually they will attain better grades. With this, uh, they are going to network uh, because uh, this uh, innovation brings teachers together even in their communities. They can arrange to meet at a time of convenience and they have discussions, they enrich their knowledge. So it is a way to go. It is really a way to go. 
uh, we see uh, teachers getting digital skills. You've given the, them this gadget to use. Um, some of them maybe didn't know about the use of uh, uh, branded learning, but now with this gadget, they've learned that they can also do the same to their learners. Uh, it is not going to end at them. Uh, definitely, the teachers are going to uh, to carry on with the same innovation. You've used it on them, they've learned that it works, so they are going also to cascade it. We have an office at the Ministry of Education that is in charge of research and innovations. My role is to submit a written report to the Ministry of Education so that engagements, discussions can begin and we see wh how we can scale it up. This collaborative effort has not only proven the viability of our innovation, but has also contributed to creating a unique prototype to be further replicated and scaled for empowering women in the pursuit of higher education. I think it was possible for us to help the community eventually. We hope that the society changes as we move on because that is the general outcome. But of course the immediate one is for them to complete their studies faster. This has been a very successful pilot project which we need to scale out and be able to include, you know, to, to include more uh, women and men students, especially at the, that lower level of primary and secondary education, to access higher degrees. We are planning with the Faculty of Education, which has carried out this one, to see how else we can manage to improve. So in terms of uh, the immediate steps, we are strengthening our e-learning program. We are, we are strengthening the, the training of the uh, teachers in e-learning. And we are collaborating with other partners who are going to help us in these areas so that we can now bring more more learners into this system.